Hi, I'm May. I'm from The Upcoming. Hi, May. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you too. So can you give us a brief introduction into Schools Out Forever and what it's about and what um, audiences can expect from it? Yeah, uh, Schools Out Forever is about a boy called Lee Keegan, who is basically stuck at his boarding school waiting for his mother to pick him up after a um, apocalyptic event um, wipes out most of the world's population. And it's kind of um, uh, several students left in this boarding school and what happens next. Why did you choose to adapt this particular story? How did you initially come in contact with it and um, why this? Uh, I initially came in contact with it because uh, I was, it was over 10 years ago, but I was working in a library um, and just stacking shelves. And I just found the book that it's based on on the shelf and pulled it down and looked at it and went, that sounds cool. Um, and, and read it and it was cool. And um, I love Scott's book. And I was getting into filmmaking then myself as a career. And I, and I, there was a, there's a producer I work with um, uh, very closely uh, called Emma who produced this film. And um, I sent the book to her and said, we should do this one day. And, um, and fortunately we did eventually get to do it. So, yeah. What aspects of the book did you want to, did you want to, did you want to firmly incorporate into the film and what aspects did you want to not incorporate into it? I think, um, I mean, I loved, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of genre fiction in general, whether it's a film or a book or whatever. And I loved the way this interacted with genre stuff. Um, this kind of, uh, our producer coined it as Mad Max in the home counties vibe. It was kind of, it was kind of an apocalypse, but um, we've seen that a lot in American films. We've seen that a lot in all, all, all kinds of scenarios, but we've never really seen it in rural Britain. Um, and I just love that. Um, that set up and then at the core of it is this actually for, for that scenario quite soft story about a boy missing his mum um you know and, and waiting for his mum to turn up and make everything okay which I think in a weird way we all do our whole lives and it <laughs> never happens um but uh or certainly doesn't happen once we're grown-ups and and you know that's really the heart of the story and I love that as a, as a kind of juxtaposition to this very hard actiony apocalypse you know, um, uh, backdrop. And that was it. And then, and then obviously there's a lot of, we've, we've all been to school. We all sort of know what that feels like. And, and, um, and that's a really cool setting again for an apocalypse movie, which I don't think I'd ever seen before. It's a story that was published years ago and it's probably mm. been done a billion times over the same kind of premise, but it does have an uncanny kind of like resemblance to what's going on right now in the world. Um, did the changes in reality affect the script in any way as you were doing it? No, I mean, funny if we, we shot the whole film long before Corona was even a word anybody had heard of apart from for the beer. Um, it, 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 we shot in the summer of 2019 and then we were actually editing the film when when the first wave of Corona and lockdown hit the UK, um, and we had to shut down post production for a while because at that time nobody had quite worked out how to do the sort of remote editing and all that stuff that you can do now. Um, so, yeah, we were we were ironically shut down by the pandemic. Film was shut down by the pandemic, but um, we no, I mean, it, it, funnily enough, in all the development of it, it was quite hard to convince people that a virus was a good premise for an apocalypse because at that time it was all zombies and you know all the all the things you've seen a million times and people would always say do you not want you know something else in this do you not want some zombies do you not want a, you know some something to like make it more of a thing yeah. um and um so no i mean the, the script changed not at all the only change we made in response to corona um was that in one of the images on Lee's phone, um, when he's looking through the stories, we photoshopped on a mask because we realized we'd made the error of shooting a, a film about a pandemic and nobody's wearing a mask because <laughs> that wasn't a thing then. When you were casting, what were the specifics or the main factors that you were looking for when casting for Mark and Lee's characters? Basically a good chemistry between them. Um, it, was, it was one of those casting jobs where it wasn't just about casting one or the other. They both had to be very strong and very good actors and very good at playing the character, but they also had to 
spark off each other well you know and 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 once we got once we found them and we liked them it was a case of putting them into a room together and making sure that they they you know reacted well and we had you know several lees and several max in several rooms together finding the best chemistry but we really did luck on the best possible combination with with oscar and liam i mean they're they're amazing and you know they were we were very lucky because they were our top picks to cast and then when we sat them in a room together they were brilliant um uh you know in their chemistry um so that was very lucky what was the hardest part about working with a, a character a, a cast of characters that's very young but they're going through these very mature and very traumatic experiences i think the hardest part the hardest part is that they by by virtue of how young they are in their experience whilst they, they they were all incredibly talented actors you obviously have to be aware that they might not have the lingo that you have developed over many years working in the industry that an older actor might you know you can say things and that older actor might know exactly what you're talking about and how to do that um and i guess sometimes you have to just go into a bit more depth with them but Actually, I would say for the most part, it was a bonus, not not a, not a problem, because they were just so energetic and so into it, and so full of like wanting the project to be brilliant and really investing in it in a way that you know, obviously, older actors are amazing, but when you're making a project, you know, they will be going from one job to another, and whilst they put you know their passion and love into it it is another job and it is another project and they're banking on different amounts of success and which one's going to go off. These guys were just doing their first film and they were loving it and they were just so into it and, you know, wanted it to, wanted it to be everything it could be. And last question, but were there any other film directors or any films you looked at to, you looked to when making this or was it all just your own creation and ideas? Uh, no, I wish I wish it was, but I don't think I don't believe any films ever somebody's uh, original creation or ideas. Everything takes from somewhere, and um, yeah, I think I mean there's loads. I I couldn't even begin to. I mean, a lot of people say they feel a lot of Edgar Wright in it, the kind of Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, that kind of um, that kind of style, which I think is in there in the humour definitely. Um, but uh, I also, I mean, I love. Uh, Danny Boyle's filmmaking and like 28 Days Later is in there a lot, much more subtly because obviously that was an aggressive kind of zombie movie. But there's a there's a lot of um, there's a lot of touches of that. Um, I mean, just so many. There's a there's a great film called The Signal, which uh, is an apocalyptic movie, which is which is directed by three different directors that I take loads from every time I make any kind of genre movie. I think it's incredible. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, just just tons. E everything's kind of a rip off from somewhere. I, Martin McDonough is my personal hero and a lot of the darkness and the dark humor comes from him and his work. Um, but yeah, I could I mean, I could just go on and on and on. Um, but uh, yeah, I nicked it all, basically. <laughs> Thanks for your time.